Hey guys, even here, in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with a new posing video of Andrew Jacked and in this physique update I think Andrew looks the best that he ever looked in a physique update. Last year we followed his progress prior to Texas Pro and in all of those physique updates, in all of those photos, he did look amazing, he looked great. But right now, I think he is on another level, because look at this fullness, and the separation, and the conditioning for this point in prep, 5 weeks out, guys. So for 5 weeks out, he's already pretty much shredded, not quite, not completely, but conditioning is really good at this point. And look at the fullness, the roundness, the 3D. He looks like he made serious progress since the Olympia. I think he utilized his post-show rebound maximally and now that he's working with Chris Asito and that he has Chris Psycho Lewis in his corner to train him personally, I think he assembled a dream team for himself that will push him to actually reach that 100% of Andrew Jack that everybody is talking about and I think it's gonna happen this year at the Arnold, I think so, I really think so. Now, the question is, is it only that he was sick, that he had a flu for the Mr. Olympia and that's why he didn't look his best and now that he's recovered, he's starting to look much better? Or is it maybe something to do with who is coaching him? Maybe Chris Asito is actually a much better coach than George Farah. Or maybe George Farah, because of his illness, wasn't able to really focus. And now that he has a new coach who is, you know, a very, very successful coach, who has coached a couple of Mr. Olympias, like Jay Cutler, like Sean Roden, I think things are starting to click, really, for Andrew Jacked. Everything, the whole situation, like having a trainer in person, being super focused himself, having a couple of really successful rebounds, and just more shows, more preps, is gonna make his body look more mature, and those time periods, those rebounds, post-show rebounds, are a great time to actually make some serious progress when your body is absorbing everything, like a sponge, as they say. So now the real question is where Andrew Jack can place at the Arnold Classic. Well, as the show approaches at about one or two weeks out, I will make a prediction video, a complete video, where I'll go in full depth analysis, but as for now, right off the bat, based on what I saw, and I haven't really seen too much, but based on what I saw so far, if I had to place Andrew somewhere, I think he will be in that top three, potentially even top two. I think he will beat Sean Clarida, maybe Sean is a little bit more complete, but this guy is an absolute giant and he's going to completely dwarf Sean Clarida and I think he's going to be improved and I mean Andrew Jack is not a nobody, like he is really really genetically gifted and now that he is improved, I think he's going to beat Sean Clarida, I think he's going to beat Big Remy, in my opinion he beat him at the Mr. Olympia as well. I mean, it was kind of close, but because of all the injuries, all the wrong things about Big Ramy's physique, I would have Andrew placed ahead of him. And as far as Samson Dauda, I think it was very, very close at the Mr. Olympia between these two guys. You know, Samson was at one point in that second callout, they were making sure that he belongs in the first callout, and in that comparison, it was very, very close between these two guys. And that was kind of Samson at his best, and that was not Andrew at his best. And Arnold Classic, I think, is going to be Andrew at his absolute best. So be my guest, tell me who do you think, which one of these two Nigerians uh, actually has a better physique. I think they are very similar, but I don't see either of them really beating Nick Walker this year. But I do see Andrew potentially placing second at this Arnold Classic, maybe even first, I wouldn't be too surprised, I think anybody in that top 5 can win, but if I was a batting man, if I had to put him somewhere, I would say second or third, what do you guys think? Out of all these guys that are doing the Arnold Classic, once again, Nick Walker is my favorite, but also, he is ahead of everybody else in terms of conditioning, I think nobody is in this level of conditioning at this point, he is pretty much shredded already, as you can see he's really dry, really lean and still very very big and I'm glad to see that he's really focused on maintaining his uh, waist size, I think he's really focused on that and he's doing a great job maintaining that, that midsection, if he wasn't focused on it, if he was just 
if you're just worried about getting as big as possible, as as massive, as muscular, as round and full and stuff like that, he would lose that, I would have to say, tight midsection. His waist is blocky, you know, genetically, structurally, he's not, he doesn't have a narrow waist, he has a wide waist, but he manages to keep it under control, and he deserves props for that, for sure. As you can see right here, he says that, uh, of course, his goal is to be two-time champ, and he's 263 this morning, so he's pretty much at around his competition weight, so he's pretty much there. And from this point on, I think he needs to slow down his prep. I think, I'm, I'm sure, Matt Jensen knows what he's doing. And he's going to probably slow him down because he's already pretty much shredded. Like, where is all that body fat that he needs to lose in the next five weeks? He pretty much doesn't have any body fat to lose. Really, what he needs to do right now is to get harder and fuller, maybe, rounder. But he is very flat and he is really dry. And again, 263, that is around his competition weight. I think he was like 255, 256, 7 uh, at, the, at the Olympia. So if he dehydrated right now, he would be right there. So he's pretty much ready to compete. I mean, if he did a peak week right now, he would be ready for the stage, I think. He posted this photo, and based on his hair, you can notice that this is recent. So obviously he had a refeed. And I'm sure he's having these muffins daily. I'm sure he's trying to slow down his metabolism right now because, as I said, he's pretty much already there in terms of conditioning, body fat percent. He's not quite there yet as far as hardness, as far as roundness, but he's getting there. He's almost there. So he's definitely ahead of everybody else. I mean, Andrew Jack is not this condition, nor is Samson, nor is Sean Clarida. And we haven't seen anything from Big Grammy at this point, we have no idea what he's looking like, but Nick, as you can see, is already in great shape, he's really maintaining that tight midsection, which is really, really important for him, for his physique, but I mean, overall, his entire physique right now, uh, the conditioning aspect, and just the overall size, muscularity, everything, really, he is definitely, I think, ahead of everybody else, and I think he is definitely the favorite to win this show. So it would, it would be stupid to say somebody else is going to win it, unless somebody posts something absolutely incredible that is going to completely smoke me, I will change my mind. But as for now, I do have Nick Walker. His physique is not my favorite physique, for sure. I don't like really his aesthetics, but I am aware of how the judging criteria works. I'm aware of what they're looking for, even though it's Arnold's show and Arnold would definitely prefer somebody like Andrew Jackson Samson to win. I don't think he has that much influence. I think the judging criteria will be the same as it is in every show. Maybe, maybe the other, like the tall aesthetic guys, will have a slight, slight edge. If it is like very close, hard to determine who is going to win, then they might uh, lean towards the more aesthetic, the tall, the classic looking guy. But I don't know if that's going to happen. I think Nick is going to win decisively. All right, now talking about the aesthetic guys, uh, here is a little update of Patrick Moore, who is doing the Arnold Classic, and in this photo that he posted, I don't know, man, he doesn't look like much to me. He says he's four weeks out of Arnold Classic, he's locked in, but honestly, based on what I'm seeing right here, I don't imagine he's going to look better than he did back in 2019. I think he's going to look worse. I think he's physique overall digressed that's just my opinion what i'm what i'm getting based on these photos that he's posting uh, here is another one as you can see his shoulders are kind of down in size they are not really as as round as bubbly as they were i think something weird is happening with his arms as well now this guy is kind of known for like he looks good when he is conditioned so until he is completely shredded if he gets completely shredded you only saw him shredded once at that 2019 Mr. Olympia, if he gets that lean, then his physique might change and he might look very good, but as for what I'm seeing right now in these photos, I don't know, man, I'm not impressed, really, I mean, based compared to the other guys, like, he's a great bodybuilder for sure, but compared to the others, to the other nine guys, I have him last, and if you guys watch Fuad Abiyad's podcast, they are doing these predictions and they have this spreadsheet and literally everybody had him dead last. 
So <laughs> he should not watch that podcast. Everybody out of like 10 guys that did the predictions, everybody had Patrick Moore in that last spot. And I have to agree. I have to say so as well. I think he will be the last place. I mean, somebody has to be there. And I think Kamal Gargni will probably beat him. I think Justin Rodriguez will probably beat him. Akim as well. William Bonek as well. I mean, be my guest. Tell me who do you think Patrick Moore can beat in this lineup. He might surprise us all. But, you know, based on what I'm seeing right here and based on his previous shows... I don't think he's that level of a bodybuilder. I don't think he really can compete against these guys. And I think he's going to place last. So whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And here is Akeem. Now, I, I talked about Akeem as somebody who might potentially surprise everybody. Because yes, in 2020, he was 6th at the Mr. Olympia. Guys, 6th at the Mr. Olympia. I mean, just imagine that. This year, he wasn't even in that top 16. He didn't place this year. And I think it mainly has to do with his conditioning. Of course, it has to do with uh, with tougher competition, for sure. But, I mean, going from 6 to, I don't know, 20th, that's a little bit too much. I mean, there are some new guys, some guys improved. So, it would make sense if he stayed the same to go down to, like, 10th. But to go down that many places, that's because... I think that's because his conditioning. He was only conditioned once in his life, one year, 2020. I think Tampa Pro and then Mr. Olympia, and that's why he plays that high. But if he doesn't bring that same conditioning against Arnold, he's going to be, I don't know, like ninth, right behind Patrick Moore. Now, he posted this photo of his back, and his back double is, like, really bad. It's horrible compared to all of his other poses. Like, if you see his side chest, you would think this is Mr. Olympia's side chest. I mean, he has one of the craziest side poses ever, but especially because of his legs. His legs from the side have incredible height. Uh, but also, like, front double bicep, like, those bicep peaks are really, are really peaky. However, from the back, that back is so shallow, man. So, so shallow. There is literally an indentation in the mid back like he's not popping anything out it's literally going inside that's how shallow his back is i don't know how is this even possible i mean guy with this kind of genetics how can he put on more muscle than this i don't get it and i'm really impressed that he's that he's uh, brave enough to post a back double like this so he probably thinks it's improved and it might be you know, back is the kind of muscle that looks much, much better when you are conditioned. When you are a little bit chubby, it doesn't look that good, especially if your back is weak. And so it goes back to conditioning. If he brings great conditioning, his back is also going to look better. And I think his back does look better now in this pose than it, did, than it did like last year. And I think he changed his posing a little also. He improved that. So it looks, I don't know, somewhat okay. I think last year at this point he wouldn't even post this this pose in this point in prep. So I'm sure he's happy with the progress he made. I'm sure he made some progress. However, it's definitely his worst pose and it's going to cost him a couple of spots. This is the only reason why he cannot win the Arnold Classic. If he had, I don't know, let's say uh, Nick Walker's back and everything else the way it is, then this guy would have potential to win the Mr. Olympia. But with his back, you know, it's going to hold him back quite a bit. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Tell me in the comment section down below your thoughts. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.